like I like the kind of director, not a favorite person or favorite character per se, but I like the director who is first and foremost excited about the material. Because if a, a director is not excited about the material, most likely he will not do anything about it. No, he will. I also write, like a director who adds uh, a layer of meaning into the play. If the director just simply stages the play, uh, which is okay, because in my mind, is uh, you know that's that's what it is. No, it's uh, uh, that's the way I saw it. No? But uh, sometimes a director surprises me and says, you know what? There's a hidden meaning to this particular scene, which relates to another scene in the end. So. If you will just tweak it a little bit and rewrite this line, it will go directly to that one last line in the end and it will be more fantastic. And so I like a director who engages himself in the text and then tells me what he thinks about the play and adds more layers to the play, more layers than I expected the play to have. I do not trust a director who doesn't read. I also do not trust a director who doesn't take notes during rehearsal because it means that this person is either, you know, has a um, uh, photographic memory, which I doubt, or, you know, he's, he's not doing his job. He's not, he's not anticipating things. He's not writing it down. He's not, he's not being cerebral. I think that's the word. I, I don't like directors who are not cerebral. Yes, as often as I say in the class, I will say all over again that people in the theater should be one of the most intelligent people in the world because theater making is an intelligent process. It's, for me, it's not just entertainment. It's something that you think about for the longest period of time about certain things about your life, about uh, the community around you, about the relationship between people. And therefore, they should have a level of uh, intellectual competence. Also because the language of theater is very, uh, is very wide. When you talk about theater, you don't only talk about um, writing. You talk about psychology, you talk about politics, even if you don't intend to. Because once that two people engage in uh, conversation and dialogue, uh, all the other things that matter in life will have to be considered in that particular uh, dialogue or conversation. Ah, uh, no, I don't. Uh, well, I. Uh, yeah, well, no, maybe not. Maybe not. I, I want somebody else to problematize it. Uh, but I do like directing other people's plays. <laughs> oh, I, I certainly, certainly loved it. Although I don't know if Sir Ding Dong loved me back as well, but I, I certainly, certainly did like the process. And you know, what, what's very important about working in the theater is primarily to work with people whose intentions and whose uh, set of skills, theatrical skills, are the same as yours. You know, we were all together in one room and people were uh, so worried about us because maybe one week or two weeks before the show, we were still dissecting the play. And they just couldn't, you know, they couldn't fathom it. They, they were saying, why are you spending so much time with the text? <laughs> and then I realized, yes, we were spending so much time with the text because we wanted to understand all of it before uh, we staged it. And you know what, now that you mentioned it, uh, it was easy for me to direct it because while Ding Dong was rewriting the lines and uh, fixing the scenes, I really saw where it was going and it was being directed in my mind. So when we started uh, blocking it, you know, it just came naturally and organically because it was already directed while we were, you know, Ding Dong was still rewriting the not not often what i see is that there is some kind of uh, director trying to prove that uh it that the that the play will be a triumph in direction which is which is 
I don't know. It's just me. No, it's just me. Yeah, I, more and more, I see that the, the attitude of the director is that uh, he doesn't believe or she doesn't believe the, in the play too much, but he's he's out there to prove that he can do something about the play and make it watchable. To discover the text, to enrich the play, to make it wider, to have more resonance. If this is your play and it's just five, after the director has worked on it, it should be ten, or maybe seven, or maybe six. Basta dapat meron siyang add-on. Pag wala siyang add-on, parang, parang okay naman, pero parang add more in terms of clarity siguro. In terms of clarity. Ibig sabihin, the director must understand you. First of all, the director must understand the player, right? Uh, his intentions, what he means, and then it's a it's a constant back and forth, back and forth. What did you mean by this? Why are they going like this? Why, why, why didn't it go that way? How, how could it be? How could it be staged? I will give you an example. As a playwright, I I never think of yung parang should I write this scene in because it cannot be done on stage. I never do that. I always write what I want to write. And in one particular play, I wrote in that the two characters are going to ride a roller coaster. So when, you know, when some people read it, they say, oh, we cannot afford that. How can you put a roller coaster? And then I said to myself, you know, that's not the attitude. The attitude really is to discover how you can put that roller coaster in the, in the stage. Because that's what I want. That's what the material wants. Because that's that the roller coaster as a frightful ride is a metaphor for the play itself. So you have to put it there, regardless of whether you have that thing or not. You have to show me the roller coaster. So when it was shown to the director, the director did not even mind it. He said, "Okay, we'll we'll discover what it is. What." What dramatic action, what dramatic image, what dramatic metaphor we can find for that roller coaster. And then when they found it, it worked perfectly. I, I myself was surprised. I said, wow, I didn't expect that that was what the roller coaster was going to look like. And then I said, yeah, he's the director. He, he added five. If, if, for example, a playwright uh, director asks me to rewrite, I always comply. I, I will. I think I will, well. No, I will comply. Why do I say that? Because uh, you know, I've I've met some directors who've asked me to rewrite my plays, and uh, I I was very happy to rewrite it for them. Especially if they, they have a question like, why is this like this? Why is this like this? And sometimes I I get too much into the to the writing uh, process that I don't even question the director anymore. I just keep rewriting it and rewriting it until, you know, I, I can see something. And then finally, it's not the play that I wanted to write pala. <laughs> but it's okay. It's all part of the, you know, it's all part of the learning process. And then uh, you, uh, one can learn to say, yeah, this is the, the play. I, uh, we will rewrite it. but. I will re only rewrite it so in so much because uh, rewriting it more will lead me into writing another play, which is not my intention at all. It's an attitude that I don't share. As a director, I want to discover the infinite possibility of the play, and I want to show it. And then if they keep playing the play, and if they keep exploring it even if the play fails in the sense that it might not be a very good play at the end of the day they succeeded in exploring the play which is the most important thing in a play that's why it's called play indeed you're not there to prove that you're the best i don't think that's the case sometimes in our circle of friends of playwrights we have writers who write differently right? because their voice is different. And sometimes when I see that their plays are given to a 
another director but sometimes they they sort of like they want a they want to polish it because they want the play to succeed in that way when in fact three-fourths of playmaking is actually in how you deal with it in rehearsals Tulad niya itong Poetics, noong 350 BC. Tapos hanggang ngayon, binabalikan siya parati sa, sa school. Uh, parang nakakatulong kaya ito sa hindi school na uh, parameter. Kunyari, pag ordinaryong manunulat na tayo sa teatro. Hindi naman ordinaryong manunulat. Kunyari, manunulat tayo sa teatro. Uh, kailangan ba natin balikan itong Poetics? Yun eh bakit siya, na, ba, bakit siya nagagaling-galingan? Ano yung... Ano judge yung... daw siya kasi no. Ano? <laughs> siya yung judge. <laughs> Dun sa homo-contest nila. An- ano ang Actually, karapatan siya, siya niya? Lang yung, para... Siya lang yung naunang nagsulat nitong mga pero alam na nila lahat. At Aristotle in responding kay Plato regarding dun sa stand ni Plato na art is uh, not so good. Diba? Nasa kanya, if you want a rational society, you have to pick out the artists first. No? Because they have uh, they have the ability to make the citizens irrational. So, in responding to that, ang ginamit lang ni Aristotle, hindi naman niya sinabi, diba, dun sa kanya poetics na alam mo, Plato malika. Now, actually, he agrees with Plato in terms of, in terms of yes, it's imitation. And yes, what we are imitating, yun yung very important that is to tell. What we are imitating is this. Kaya lang, ang ginamit niya lang to prove his point kay Plato na importante rin yung art at yung art ay hindi lang siya, hindi, hindi ka naman tutulakin para maging irrational. Ang ginamit niya is drama. So, ang sabi niya, dalawang drama, tragedy at comedy, at uh, da- doon, uh, in-outline na niya o nagbigay na siya ng kanyang mga kuro-kuro tungkol sa uh, kung ano ang mga elemento na kailangan meron ng isang dula para matawag siyang magandang drama. Meron silang isang ano isang estudyante na medyo pasaway. Di ba ayaw niyang, ayaw niyang sundin? Sino? <laughs> Nicholas Mitchell yung, yung pangalan. <laughs> <laughs> yung, yung, yung di ba si ano, uh, Sophocles, uh, Eschylus, Sophocles, tsaka si Euripides. Tapos yung isa, yung isa na medyo, medyo ex- experimental siya, yung parang pasaway siya. Sino yung pangalan nun? Nakalimutan ko na. Tapos hindi siya nananalo, isang beses lang siya nanalo. Kasi ayaw niyang mag-stick dun sa rules. Uh, bye, Naalala bye. mo? Kasi Euripides, diba? Four or five Oo. times lang siya nag-post. Kasi nga, nag-deus of smacking. Oo, tsaka lumalayo na siya dun sa sinasabi nung, nung, ano, nung ni Aristotle. Yung, yung, ano, yung nanalo ng isang beses lang. Naalala, si Agaton ba? Saan makikita yan? Si May website Agaton. ba sila? <laughs> Oo, si Agaton. Si Agaton, ang bagets na bagets ang, at guwapo. Ang bagets. Guwapo. Ang bagets, guapo at ducks, pero pasaway. So, ang ganon. So, ang sinasabi kasi nga ni Aristotle, what he is trying to prove to Plato dito sa poetics na no, itong art, specifically drama, is not a copy of a copy. No, actually, it is a copy, it is a copy of the idea. So, hindi siya twice removed. Sinabi mo a copy of a copy, it's as simple as, so, meron sa real of idea, what is our idea of a tree? So kapag kapag gumawa ng painting ng puno, pupunta uh, uh, kokopyahin yung isang puno halimbawa sa bakuran. But ang problema ni Plato doon, nagbabago kasi yung puno sa bakuran. So pupwedeng, 'di ba, yung malagasan ng dahon o merong meron ko anong mangyari dun sa puno. So sa kanya, why would you copy something which will change? No, so yun yung isang point niya. And the number two, uh, that tree in itself is already a copy of our idea of a tree. 
So, ang kinopya mo ay kopya ng kopya. So, ang sinasabi ni Aristotle, no, dun ka mali Plato. Yun yung buong ano niya, argument niya doon sa poetics. It is to prove, it is to prove uh, that ang, ang drama, diba, in particular, ay hindi naman siya copy of a copy. Kaya siya universal. Kaya lumabas yung universality dito sa poetics ni Aristotle. Kasi ang sinasabi niya, Plato, uh, medyo literal yung take mo. So, the puno, no, it's not really the puno in the bakuran that is being copied by a painter or in a painting. It is really the puno or the essence of a puno. So, what makes a tree a tree? So, parang sa drama naman, yun yung sa kanya, what makes human human? Pag, uh, uh, meron siyang word na ginagamit, lahat sila may word na ginagamit. Sinasabi nila yung mimesis. Anong masasabi natin sa mimesis? What? Parang, uh, kapag uh, kinopya niya yung puno, uh, may, may nangyayari sa utak niya na nadidiscover niya na ang tawag dyan sa, sa object na yan ay puno at kapag drinowing ko na puno, nagkakaroon siya ng uh, discovery na hindi ko alam kung ano siya, pero kapag drinowing ko na siya, malalaman ko na siya kung ano siya. Parang na, so sabi niya, gustong gusto niya ang tragedy kasi may beginning, middle, and end. Parang ganyan. Tapos ang pangatlo, sinasabi niya, it expresses a magnitude. Ma, ma ano eh, ma, malawak yung sinasabi ng, ng tragedy. Uh, malawak in the sense na hindi lamang tungkol sa pamilya, ang pinag-uusapan kung dilipunan. So, hin- mahirap din mag-fit into a tragedy. Like, officially, ang, ang naisulat yeah, diba, na tragedy. Na-debunk na naman siya. Diba, sir? Na-debunk na naman siya kasi... Na, kasi oo, oo, oo. Hindi na, hindi na. Oh, no, great, parang great no, no, figures oh, oh. na pa. Nung, nung, una, nung unang panahon, uh, syempre, ano, dahil nga sa sa taas ng isip ni Aristotle na ang daming nap- napaniwala. So, maraming mga sinulat pagkatapos ng Greek period na ganito, no? na dapat hari lang para maging tragedy until dumating ang uh, uh, realism period, si uh, Death of a Salesman, yun ang sinasabi nila na yun ang nag-break. Sabi nila, this is a tragic character and yet he is not a king or he is not a uh, a person of high renown At may ha, may part of me who wants a different character i mean when i write so to make it someone special enough to write about pero may qualities din dapat na relatable uh,